in this area we're going to explore today this large grassy field. At the bottom of the field there's a small stream which runs up past some houses so we'll take a look at that as well. And as you can see here we've got a trail coming out of the stream and you can follow the track on up towards the path. Um, this is potentially the track of a beaver or a mink or perhaps an otter but I'm not quite sure at the moment. So we're going to follow the track on up towards the path. And I'll follow this path underneath the bridge. So we've come out the other side of the bridge and I've actually come across another track that comes out of the river. And you can also see if you follow this track round, it picks up here and ends up at a dam-like structure which would indicate the presence of beaver in the area. So I'm going to go upstream to give you a better look of this dam. Now we're upstream you can have a better look at the dam. You can see that someone's put a pipe through the centre to prevent flooding of the area. Beavers like to flood an area so that they have a better territory for fishing. You can see more clearly if you look at the far side how this dam has been filled with a muddy sediment to reduce water flow. Now this dam is in actually pretty bad repair which would suggest that the beavers actually moved on from the area at the moment but we'll take a look further upstream and see if we can see any more signs. I've just arrived further up the river and I've come across another track that runs along the side protectors on the bottoms of the trees which might have been put there to prevent damage from the beavers. And I've arrived at another track coming out of the stream and I found what appears to be a deer print right here. Apart from that there are also some human tracks and I've come across a print here And that could well be a dog or perhaps something else. And here's another one. I was hoping to find evidence of foxes, and I think we've got it right here. Now, if you look very closely in this feces, you'll see evidence of small mammal bones. Foxes will eat many mice and voles per day, so there's always evidence of bones amongst their feces, which is a clue. So let's go and see if we can find any more evidence of foxes nearby. And here we have another drop of fox poo here on top of this molehill, alongside some rabbit. Alongside some rabbit poo, which obviously is a common occurrence. And now moving away from the river we've come across a, another track so I'm going to follow this. I can see a fence so that might give us some clue as to what's been using this path. You can actually see a labyrinth of paths throughout this grassy area which suggests something's quite active here. And now as we come up to the fence I'm going to take a look and see if I can see any hairs trapped on the wire. There's actually none as I can see. So we're no further on but these holes could have been made by foxes or rabbits. And you can see the path continues on up onto the fence. But I'm not going to go that way just yet. And I'm just going to follow the perimeter of this fence to see if there are any more holes that might give us a clue. Oh, and here we've got one here. So something has been using this little track under the fence. And I'll investigate for hair. It doesn't look to me any that I can see, although there is some rabbit droppings here. So we might find our culprit, but could also potentially be used by foxes. And now I've walked further along the fence and I've come to another hole through underneath and we've actually got some hair this time if you can see that. So 
the thing to do is to remove the hair from the fence and roll it between your fingers to get an idea of the type of shape. It's always a good clue. And from inspecting this hair it looks quite like rabbit to me. So let's have a look for some rabbit burrows in the area. And actually just along the fence we've got a large hole. So the next thing to do is to check out the diameter of the hole and imagine what might fit in. So let's have a look. I'm not sure how well you can see there, but the hole looks to me to be far too small for a fox, so I would say that's a rabbit hole. And now I've come to the end of the fence again, and we're going to follow this path up through a stone wall which has been knocked down, probably by humans. Let's see if we can spot any signs of mammals in the area. And the first thing I've come across is this hole in the ground. It looks to be a rabbit's burrow that's probably not used anymore because of all these sticks that are in the way. Generally, animals will rake anything out of the way of their burrow if they're using it. Let's see if we can find any more holes. Oh, we've come across this next one it's actually quite large and the type of ground that it's been built in it's a bit surprising it's kind of shingly rather than soily there's another disused hole over here and further up I found another rabbit burrow entrance again this is now a more typical substrate sandy soily Clay. It's quite stable for burrows. We've got another fence here, so I'll follow the perimeter of that in just a second. And there's definitely a track leading up to the fence that I was pointing out a second ago. So I'm gonna follow this and see where it goes. This fence has been torn. Now, that's not actually at ground height, so I reckon this is most likely to be roe deer. And again, we can examine it for hairs, see if there are any clues. There are a few hairs actually there on the green barbed wire. Again, we can rub them between our fingers and see if that, see the texture. I definitely think this is a deer hair. I'll try to take a photograph of that and see if I can add that into the video. So let's go back to where we came and see if we can find any more signs of mammal life. And now we're back at the river that I walked along earlier. You can actually see how fast moving the water is from here. So we'll walk back along the other side this time and see if there are any more signs of mammals by the river. And in this muddy bit of ground I've just spotted what looks to be a deer footprint. So I'll just zoom in for, the, for you. Let's see if there's any more footprint in this piece of mud. Here's another one. And another one up here. And this hoof mark shape is the type of thing that we'd expect for deer. And here we've got a couple more mole hills, so we know they're around as well. And just over here we can see the track from earlier from the other side. So you can see just how evident that really is. I've come across some more mole hills on the path. Following this track. And now we're even closer to the original dam and you can see this large pool of water which might be quite nice for beavers. I'm not really sure. 
and now I'm back to the bridge again so we'll just go under here and see if we can find anything else on this side. We can actually see how close we were to the road all this time. This is the road that's just beside the field we were in, just on the far side of that crash barrier. So it's really remarkable that we can see so much wildlife evidence in such a urban and built up area.